Hi, so in video 1447 we made a flywheel and did something on flywheels, talked about them in a little bit. And there's a lot of posts saying, uh, wouldn't it be great if you put that on magnetic bearings? And magnetic bearings are super interesting, but real magnetic levitation is actually pretty difficult to do. If it's static, that is permanent magnets, it's supposed to be impossible. If you spin the magnets, you can get it to levitate, and that's called dynamic stabilisation, and it's the thing that the Levitron was based on, that toy that became popular in the 80s. The much easier way to do it is with diamagnetism. If you use pyrolytic graphite or a diamagnetic material, it will automatically levitate. Unfortunately, um, it's not really a strong force, so it can't carry any weight. And the most popular way is what's called pseudo-levitation. Pseudo levitation is where you fix one axis because magnets always want to fly off from each other. So if we pop a magnet down and we have another magnet that we try to levitate above it, it's going to want to fly off because of the forces of attraction. It's getting pushed one way, pulled the other way, and it wants to fly off. But if we stabilize it in one direction, then it will just levitate, and that is called pseudo-levitation, and it's perhaps the simplest way of doing it. Now, we have done this before when we did the rubber band engine. That was pseudo-levitation using needles of a bearing, and Tom Stanton did the same thing on his flywheel battery, and the magic floating pen are all examples of pseudo-levitation. This kind of pseudo-levitation, where it's in that axis, is a little bit rarer. You see it very often in that axis. This way is what Lidmotor did when he did one of his, his motors by doing it that way. And remember that the force of a magnet is proportional to the square of the distance. So when it's a long way away, it's quite a weak force. But as you press it down and you can feel it if you do it, that force gets very much stronger, which is kind of cool because it means that when it's in this direction, it's going to be able to carry a lot of weight, and sure enough, it can, which is awesome when you think Over about on, it. Welcome to the world now, of TNT. We had a look at these things, speaker magnets. Speaker magnets are awesome, like <laughs> loads of things are awesome, because we engineer them what you wouldn't believe. And at the back of them, you'll see a dimple. That's the centre. If you drill through that dimple, you'll get a central hole. Now, when you remove all of this, if you leave that base plate on there, like that, drill through and stick an 8mm bar in, what you'll get is a centred, stable bar with a magnet on it. And all of that is centred and square and <laughs> really easy to get just by ripping off the cone and knocking off the top bit of metal from the speaker. When we have that, we've got the basis of our levitation. You see, it's not quite strong enough like that, actually. So if we had another ring magnet, again, these are just from speakers. And we have a ring magnet here where I've put a wooden plug in the centre and then in the centre of that wooden plug, I've actually put a bearing. The bearing doesn't do anything. All it does is keeps this magnet from wobbling off, off because that is magnetic levitation. Now, it'll want to shoot off, but it can't in the same way that we did the wood. But it will be pressing to either side a little bit, and the bearing takes care of that. So what we get is a very small flywheel that will run for absolutely ages. Now, we can put our original flywheel on it, and I thought about that as well, but to be honest, loads of things will do this. So I've got a normal free weight, so this one weighs two and a half kilos, and if I pop that in the center, then we'll see it drop right down, but there's still a gap, because remember the magnetic force is the square of the distance, and if I give that a spin, <laughs> That simple flywheel will spin for absolutely ages because we're using the magnetic lift in pseudo-magnetic levitation. This again is what Tom Stanton did. And all we have to do then to copy lid motor, for example, put some extra magnets on here and some coils on the side, and we'll have ourselves a flywheel generator that will run for ages supported oops, by magnetic bearings. Anyway, I thought I would quickly run through that, the different kinds of levitation and how you might be able to use this upright magnetic levitation to run a flywheel of pretty much any description. You'll find that as they get nearer, the force gets stronger. If it's not strong enough, of course, put some more, uh, more magnets in there, but you should be able to put some pretty hefty flywheel weights on there to be able to get that to work as a flywheel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.